Whoa, fella. You got a license for that thing? Didn't think so. Well, guess what? I do, and I'm gonna use it to teach you everything you need to know about guns and where to find them in Project Zomboid. It's no big secret that I caution against using firearms. They often cause a small case of death. The reason I've always said this is because with an aiming level less than two, you simply miss 100% of the shots you take. For the record, that's an exaggeration. You only miss 80% of the shots you take. There is a way to bypass this handicap with minimal effort on your part, and that's by starting as a police officer or a veteran. These professions will boost you to an aiming level that turns guns from fancy dangerous paperweights to fancy dangerous guns. Man, these darn things are loud. Thankfully, I lost my hearing in the war. Don't ask which one. All of them. Speaking of every war, if you take the veteran profession, it gives you the desensitized trait, which prevents you from becoming panicked ever. This profession does come at a high cost, so a majority of your traits will be spent making up for that deep negative eight cut. But you could always run deaf and blind. Okay, hang on. It's gonna be easy. It was not easy. Oh. Oh, it was anything but. I don't advise that you do that, but you can. Now, starting as a police officer is a little more manageable, only robbing you of four skill points instead of eight. And although it doesn't give you a neat panic-free experience, it does give you an extra point in aiming, and I'd consider that a trade-off. It's okay, since the most efficient way to level aiming requires you to be good at aiming, but never getting panic negates one of the two major damage reductions for guns. I'll speak more on that later, but for now the winner is clear. If you can deal with all the negative traits, I would take veteran over police officer every day. To make up for that slight blunder, however, when you take the police officer profession, it gives you a slight chance to spawn inside the local police station. That's only if you choose Rosewood or West Point. I have not had any luck with Muldrow or Riverside, and I don't trust the wiki anymore. Even if you don't spawn inside the station, I'd advise you plan out your looting trips to eventually hit them for those sweet, sweet guns. Unfortunately, all the good stuff is locked behind an impenetrable door, but that's not really a problem. Obviously, the stations are a good source of firearms and ammo, but they aren't the only source. Much like a balanced diet, you're gonna need to expand your palate. Let's be honest, this isn't enough to satisfy your appetite. We're looking to become Doom Slayer, this is making us look like Duke Nukem. Irrelevant. Now I heard somewhere that you can find more guns than you can carry inside the military base north of Rosewood, but let's reel it back and start a little smaller. Like I said, police stations are a good starting point, but you need to expand. You can try the shooting range on the way to Louisville. There's a couple guns there and some good attachments. If you can fight your way through several hordes, then you can head to the Rosewood Penitentiary. There's an armory on the second floor with some firepower, but these places are higher risks for relatively low rewards. Somewhere I can confidently consider an even risk for an even reward is the gun store in West Point. You can go to the one in Louisville, but that's gonna be a little more risk. Let me explain. Yes, there'll be a large horde between you and these gun stores, but realistically, you can get from spawning in West Point to the gun store in under five minutes if you book it. And it took me less than 15 minutes, while panicked and a little exhausted, to direct and dispose of an impressive conga line of zombies. So, if you find yourself in West Point or Louisville, pay a visit to these businesses. They are locked up a little tighter than the police stations, so a shotgun isn't gonna help you here. But where a shotgun fails, a spicy sledgy picks up the slack. You can find these sledgehammers in industrial buildings. Keep in mind they are very rare, but there is a warehouse just south of the gun store in West Point. There's a very good possibility you've got a sledgehammer there. And with that gate taken care of, all that's left for you to do is stuff your van full of unlicensed firearms and make your getaway. Now there is a chance that you ran into a couple of attachments in the gun store, and if you've got a screwdriver, you can attach to or detach from the appropriate guns. There is a small problem though. Not all these attachments work as intended right now. The red dot attaches to all handguns and all rifles. This attachment improves your aim speed by five. You'll notice the aim outline starts red or orange normally, but with this attachment, that outline starts at yellow and quickly becomes green. The laser attachment works with all pistols and both assault rifles. This one works similarly to the red dot, but it improves your hit chance by five, not your aim. I suppose it would make sense to pull the trigger when you see the laser on the zombie's forehead. Now, iron sights work with all handguns and all rifles and will improve your maximum range by three tiles. Okay, what are tiles? Well, you ever click walk to or try to place an item down? That's a tile. I bet you didn't expect this game to run on the same grid system as Minecraft. Most games do that. that 
joke didn't really work. Speaking of things that don't work, the first attachment that I noticed wasn't really working the way they intended was the recoil pad. This pad is supposed to reduce the recoil rate of all rifles, but I just don't see a difference. And another one I noticed wasn't working as intended, but there's a twist. I don't think I need to explain to you what a scope is. We've all played Fortnite, Apex, it's all the same game, Super Animal Royale. That's the best one. The two times, four times, and eight times scope helps you aim further and further respectively, and they attach to all rifles. While increasing your max range to Pluto, the scopes also give you a minimum range where your chance to hit gets lower as the target gets closer. I ran a couple tests on this, and I found that at aiming level 10, the minimum didn't matter at all. At level five, the minimum still barely mattered, and at level two, I was finally missing shots. I would say level four is around the time that you can forget to take your scope off, and it won't really affect your aiming. Next up, the fiberglass stock only works with the hunting rifles and it will decrease the weight by 0.5 and increase your hit chance by 8. It's very straightforward. In the same vein, the sling is just a basic weight reduction for the JS2000 and both hunting rifles. The fun part is that you can attach both the sling and the fiberglass stock to your hunting rifle for a total of 0.8 reduction. That's not huge, but it's not bad when you consider how many cigarettes you just made room for. The answer is 160. That is so many cigarettes. This is the final one that doesn't work, the ammo strap. There's no real difference in reloading, but when they fix it, the ammo strap should decrease your reload speed for the hunting rifles and the JS2000 shotgun by five. I would be so interested to see how this plays with level 10 reloading. Our final two attachments are the choke tube full and the choke tube improved. The choke tube full only attaches to the JS2000 and increases the shotgun's damage by 0.5. However, it also decreases the spread by 0.1. On the other hand, the choke tube improved does the opposite, increasing the shotgun spread by 0.1 and decreasing the damage by 0.5. Now, the shotgun only hits four targets maximum anyway, and we've all seen a horde of zombies following us. They don't tend to spread out very far. I wouldn't recommend using the choke tube improved personally, despite its name suggesting it's better. What I would suggest is you either stick to the choke tube full or keep your shotgun free of any choking hazards. With the attachments out of the way, let's talk about damage. One of the biggest draws to using guns, whether you're choking or not, is the damage doesn't fall off when you get tired or exhausted. However, the damage drops dramatically when you're panicked or your arms are badly injured. These are the only two things I've found to affect your damage output significantly and panicked can be entirely negated by just dealing with some negative traits and taking veteran. If you're planning to exclusively use guns, please take veteran over police officer and learn to love the ability to never get panicked. Just don't let any harm come to your arms. Once you get a few lacerations, you'll be dealing single digit damage, and at that point, you may as well be using a spear. It is the actual best weapon in the game. I'm not wrong. Why would you suggest such a thing? Speaking of doing no damage, you can't hurt what you can't hit. And if you didn't start with either profession I talked about earlier, then you'll likely have zero levels in aiming and reloading. But that's okay. I'm gonna teach you how to grind these skills, starting with reloading. The fantastic thing about reloading is that you do not need a gun for this. You could use a gun, like the hunting rifles. You can just load the ammo right into that thing. But if all you have is a magazine and some ammo, you are good to go. You're just, you can stand there and load and unload the magazine until you level up 10 times or die of boredom, gain arthritis to your heart's content. Now, aiming is a little more involved than that. At level zero, you're not gonna hit much. I'm not even sure you could hit the zombie if it was asking you to shoot it. Let me put this into perspective. I had 130 bullets with aiming level zero. I killed one zombie. I thought I got five. No, I only got one. Now, in all of that, in 130 bullets, I was able to get one skill in aiming. So if you want to do it the very, very slow way, there you go. But if you want to power level this skill, you'll need a shotgun, plenty of shells, a car, and some willing contestants from the audience. Roll down your window, rally the good sports, and let your trigger finger go. If you start to get overwhelmed, just drive away. It's foolproof. I mean, look, I did it. This strategy comes with the added benefit of leveling reloading at the same time, so maybe don't waste your whole life standing in one spot slowly contracting arthritis. Instead, do what I did and ram your car into the nearby tree line while you're reloading your shotgun. Now, what level of aiming do you need to be to start getting consistent? Well, I checked out the wiki, which I don't trust anymore, and once you get to aiming level three, you should be all right to start hitting most of your shots. The game gives you a 200% multiplier to your chance to hit. At level five, you jump up to a 3000% multiplier. 
effectively turning you into an efficient killing machine. You can go even further up to a multiplier of 400% at level 7 and 500% at level 9, but I'm going to be honest with you, I have not felt much of a difference between 5 and 10. Once you hit level 5 aiming, I would argue that you're good to go. Anything after that is just genuinely a bonus. So once you're comfortable with how accurately you can shoot zombies, it's time to start thinking about the big hall, the military base just past Rosewood on the highway. Keep going down this road and you'll hit a dead end. That's what makes it a secret. Go down this path, take a left, straight, right, forward, swing left, under the tree, little nudge to the left, go straight, hit a small patch of dirt, wibble wobble this way, turn the wheel left 15 degrees, now a sharp 20 degrees, hit some asphalt, follow through and you've made it. It's easy. Now erosion will kick in eventually, but if you gun it for this spot, pun intended, in the first month or so, that won't be a huge problem. The problem comes when you're taking this hiking trail several months or maybe a year into your game. Then driving a car is impossible. The strategy here is to take an axe, hammer, and some nails with you and cut down the surrounding trees to create small resting spots where you can hide away from zombies. To do that, just build two walls on each side, don't bother with a door, maybe build a crate to store some extra supplies, and don't think about how many zombies are waiting for you on the outside. In total, you'll need 32 planks, roughly a box of nails per safe house, and to even construct these in the first place, you'll need a carpentry level of four. Now, the hard part. Once you get to the military base, you're going to see that it is overrun with zombies. I need you to keep these three things in mind when you get to the military base. One. The loot isn't going anywhere. If you have to run away, that's fine. Just don't forget to grab your I didn't survive the military base t-shirt at the toll booth. Two, you might get stranded or lost. Make sure to bring enough food, water, medical supplies, and some backup weapons to keep yourself alive for a day or two. And if you do get lost, pick a direction and stick to it. Just don't pick west. Three, there are more zombies out here than you realize, but all you have to do is organize your group. Please turn off your lights. Why? I don't think I have to justify that, actually. We're going to go arrest the military right now. Quit yelling. Get them to the base. Genuinely don't know if I'm going the right way. Me either, man. I'm like canoodling around. Is there a brown streak on the map that you can follow? Bro, I'm following the brown streak, but unfortunately I was following the one in my <laughs> pant and not on my mini. You're not wearing pants. Your wife took them. Why would you bring this up to me when you know how I feel? I found I a concrete road. What? How far ahead are you? Oh, I made it. Man, I did take the wrong path. Communicate very clearly. Yeah, it's probably for the best we clear that out. And you're shooting, so they're gonna come from all sides. Wonderful. Okay. And make sure no one does anything they might regret. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're not coming back, huh?